Welcome to D&D Builds, where we have knowledge to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. What happens when you mix a ninja with a gritty action hero from the 80s? Well, you get Solid Snake. I mean, literally, the character here is named Snake Plissken, so I think it was definitely an intentional choice. Speaking of which, let me know in the comments what your favorite ridiculous 80s action movie is. I'll let you know mine at the end of this video. And if you want access to this character sheet or any of my other character sheets, feel free to check out my Patreon, linked in the description down below, where you can be just as awesome as these people, who also get access to plenty of other perks. So now let's figure out how to build this stealthy Konami character from Kojima himself. First things first, we've got to pick a race and we're going to go with a human and a human variant more specifically. This gives us access to a feat and we're going to grab the feat Magic Initiate. This gives us access to two cantrips and one first level spell that we can use once per day. As far as the cantrips, we're going to grab Message, so that way you can communicate back to your home base a little easier. And we'll grab the cantrip Minor Illusion to help disguise yourself in a box. Then as far as the first level spell we can get from this feat, we should grab Sleep. That way you have access to using the Tranquilizer. When it comes to stats, we're not really going to focus on Strength because he needs to be super stealthy and that's a dexterity based skill. So we're going to dump strength, put 15 points into dexterity and then get another plus one from being a human variant. Then we're going to put 13 into constitution and get another plus one from being a human variant, bringing that to 14. Then take our intelligence, bring it up to 12 because Solid Snake isn't overly dumb but at the same time, we need a little bit to help with our minor illusion cantrip. Then we're gonna put 14 points into wisdom just because you're pretty perceptive of your surroundings. And then we're just gonna keep charisma at a baseline of 10 because you do have a slight rugged charm to you, even if you're not very outwardly charming most of the time. As far as a background, we're gonna go with spy. It's just pretty obvious as far as a choice. And it actually uses most of the same features as being a criminal. This gives you proficiency in deception and stealth, as well as some thieves tools. You also get one more skill from picking that human variant. So despite only having access to the one eye, we're going to grab perception because you do have to be pretty aware of your surroundings. Then we have to pick a starting class. You are very trained in stealth and that's definitely a key feature of what you do, but you also have some hand to hand combat ability. So it's a bit of a toss up, but just to please some of those optimizers out there, we're going to start with rogue. Rogues get access to more skills than some other classes might because at level one, you get to choose four skills to start. You already have access to stealth, deception, and perception. So we're going to grab acrobatics because that's definitely a very useful dexterity based skill, especially for escaping a grapple. And we'll grab sleight of hand. Then just to lean into that rugged 80s style action hero, we're going to lean into intimidation as another skill. And finally, because most of the Metal Gear games have a bit of mystery to them, we're going to grab investigation. Also at level one of rogue, you get saving throws and dexterity and intelligence. You get proficiency in thieves tools, but you already got that from your background and you get access to to simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords, which covers most of the weapons that Snake would need to use. And we're gonna be replacing his handgun with more medieval style ranged weapons, or even the hand crossbow. Additionally, you get access to light armor, which you could think of as your wetsuit, but we might wind up replacing that later. Then as far as features at the first level of Rogue, you get expertise, allowing you to double your proficiency bonus in two skills or one skill and your thieves tools. We're gonna grab expertise in stealth and we're going to go ahead and lean into the thieves tools. So that way you don't have any issues picking any locks. Also at first level of rogue, you get the feature sneak attack. This is a key feature of being a rogue. Right now it only deals an additional 1d6 damage, but it does go up as you level up in rogue. It requires you to use either a finesse weapon or a ranged weapon, and you have to have either advantage on the attack or that enemy has to have an enemy of them within five feet of them. Then the very last thing you get from first level of rogue is thieves can't, which is just a sneaky way of talking. So that way people can't really understand you. Think of it as just speaking in code. At second level, we're actually going to jump right out of rogue right away because we want to get a very important feature of another class. But before the multi-class, if you want to swap the giant mechs in Metal Gear Solid for giant Lovecraftian eldritch monstrosities, you can do that a bit more easily thanks to today's sponsor. Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt dives deep into Lovecraftian horror, and they're on Kickstarter now. With over 12 twisted races and over 15 nightmarish subclasses, you can take on plenty of the new monsters that are included, 
with a ramped up arsenal because they've also included crazy weapons that can actually change form and alter the way you fight. Not to mention other new things to spice up your D&D session like stealing powers of eldritch beings, a new madness system, risking your own sanity in one of the four adventures that's included in this, which can each be altered by the cycles of the moon, and an entirely new school of magic called Osteomancy, which is personally what I get excited about because that allows for a lot more crazy builds. Find out if you will survive the madness and join the hunt today. Their Kickstarter is linked in the description down below. Now we can jump back to full-blown espionage, to a multi-class out of Rogue, and at second level we're going to jump into our first level of Monk. We needed a class with some hand-to-hand -hand combat ability, and this is the best way to go, especially with a dexterity build. First level of Monk gives you access to unarmored defense, so now your wetsuit doesn't have to be made of leather, which is probably a bit more comfortable, allowing your armor class to be 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier, bringing it to a respectful 15. Additionally, at first level of Monk, you get access to martial arts allowing you to do some effective hand-to-hand -hand combat. This allows you to use your dexterity instead of your strength for that hand-to-hand -hand combat, dealing a d4 with any unarmed strikes, but that does upgrade as you get higher levels in Monk. Additionally, when you use the attack action, you can make an additional unarmed strike as a bonus action. At second level of Monk, you get unarmored movement. So as long as you swapped out that leather wetsuit for something a bit more practical, you can move a little faster now. And this actually really comes in handy when it comes to sneaking around, because technically you're supposed to move at a slower pace if you're trying to be super stealthy. So now that slower pace can actually still be pretty fast. Additionally, at second level of Monk, you get access to Key, allowing you a pool of points to spend on either Flurry of Blows, allowing you to use your bonus action for two unarmed strikes instead of just one, or you can use it for patient defense, spending one key point to take the dodge action as a bonus action, or you can use Step of the Wind, spending one key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action. Then at third level of Monk, you get a monastic tradition. And because we want to make sure Solid Snake is very good at using his weapons, we're going to go Way of the Kensai. Way of the Kensai allows you to have some Kensai weapons, picking one melee weapon and one ranged weapon, giving you proficiency in them, and allowing you to use them as your monk weapons. Just remember that it still has to be either ranged or finesse in order to be able to pull off using a sneak attack with it. So you can make sure that you utilize your hand crossbow or a short bow or even a long bow for this, all of which can be reflavored to be a bit more solid snake-like. You also get Agile Parry as being a path of the Kensai, so if you make an unarmed strike as part of your attack action, but you're still holding a Kensai weapon, you can get plus two bonus to your AC until the start of your next turn. Also, you get access to Kensai Shot, allowing you to use your bonus action to make your ranged attacks with your Kensai weapon more deadly, giving it an extra 1d4 of the weapon's damage type. Adding this on top of your sneak attack damage, just a nice little bonus. The last thing you get from Way of the Kensai is Way of the Brush, giving you proficiency with your choice of either calligraphy supplies or painter supplies. Considering the cultural background, we're just going to grab calligraphy supplies and keep on moving. The last thing you get from third level of Monk is deflect missiles, just giving you the opportunity to block projectiles coming at you and even possibly catch one and throw it right back. At fourth level of Monk, you get an ability score improvement, so we're going to boost our dexterity by two points, bringing it to 18. And also at this level, you get slow fall, just making it so you take a bit less damage when you jump a long distance. Then at 5th level of Monk, your Martial Arts die gets upgraded from a 1d4 to 1d6. You get Stunning Strike to be able to choke out your enemies or knock them out close range, stunning them until the end of your next turn. And you get the all-important Extra Attack. This is part of why I jumped into Monk so quickly, just because I wanted to make sure we got extra attack as soon as possible. Then at 6th level of Monk, you get a feature from Way of the Kensai, one with the blade, making your Kensai weapons magical and giving you Death Strike, allowing you to spend one key point to deal extra weapon damage equal to your martial arts die, which is just like a little bit more similar to your sneak attack because at this level it's an additional 1d6, but you can only use this feature once on each of your turns. Also at 6th level, your unarmed movement gets upgraded from an extra 10 feet to an extra 15 feet, and you get key empowered strikes, making your fists magical as well. Now instead of going 7th level in Monk, which is 8th level overall, we're going to jump back over to Rogue. At second level of Rogue, you get Cunning Action, allowing you to use your bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. And now you don't have to use key points for Step of the Wind. And we're going to keep leveling up in Rogue for right now, so at third level of Rogue, your sneak attack gets upgraded from 1d6 to 2d6, and you get to pick a Roguish Archetype, also known as a subclass. And while there is a Metal Gear game with Phantom in the title, 
We're not gonna grab the Phantom Archetype. Scout would fit pretty well, and Survivalist is a feature of being a scout, giving you proficiency in nature or survival, which could also really work, depending on which Metal Gear game you're looking into. But I can't help but go with Assassin. Assassin gives us a bonus proficiency with a disguise kit, and if your minor illusion didn't do the trick already, now you can disguise yourself as that box. So while going into the assassin subclass, you also get the feature assassinate. So even if you're not in stealth to start, if you just get the drop on an enemy and they haven't taken their turn yet, you get advantage on the attack roll against them. Not to mention, if you do have an enemy that's completely surprised, any hit against them is automatically counted as a critical hit, which is a massive amount of extra damage. Then at fourth level of Rogue, we get an ability score improvement, so we're gonna boost up our dexterity, maxing it out, which helps our damage and it increases our AC, bringing it to a respectable 17. Then at fifth level, your sneak attack gets upgraded from 2d6 to 3d6, and you get Uncanny Dodge, allowing you to use your reaction to take any damage from an attack and cut it in half. Then at 6th level of Rogue, you can give yourself expertise in two more skills. We're gonna grab Perception, because that is just so damn useful, and you need the extra help with only having one eye. And we'll go with Investigation, so you can do some better digging into what's really going on in most of the Metal Gear games. Then at 7th level of Rogue, your sneak attack gets upgraded from 3d6 to 4d6, and you get access to Evasion. So anytime you have to make a Dexterity saving throw that would cause you some damage, you automatically take half damage from that effect. And if you succeed on the saving throw, you actually take zero damage instead. Then at 8th level you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to boost up our Wisdom, which will help with stunning strikes from our Monk class, and help with our unarmored defense also from being a Monk, boosting our AC to 18. Then at 9th level of Rogue, your sneak attack gets upgraded from 4d6 to 5d6, and you get another feature from being an Assassin. You get Infiltration Expertise. This allows you to completely make a false identity. You could do this with some serious covert ops, or you could just make that box very, very believable. Then at 10th level of Rogue, you actually get another ability score improvement. So we're going to boost up our wisdom again, helping with all of our monk stuff and our perception. Then at 11th level of Rogue, your sneak attack is upgraded from 5d6 to 6d6, and you get reliable talent, making it so you can't roll anything less than a 10 on any of your skill checks as long as you have proficiency in that skill. This is so incredibly powerful when it comes to the skills you need in the game, especially since you're going to be using stealth quite a bit. Then at 12th level, you get another ability score improvement. So we're finally going to max out our wisdom, which really helps with plenty of monk stuff, and most notably, it increases our AC all the way up to 20 at this level. Then at 13th level of Rogue, your sneak attack gets upgraded from a 66 to a 76, and you get the assassin feature Imposter. So you can completely impersonate another person or another box. Then at 14th level, you get access to Blind Sense. And this is pretty helpful considering you're kind of half blind anyways. And in plenty of the Metal Gear games, you do deal with invisible creatures on occasion. So this will really help with that because Blind Sense allows you to know the location of any hidden or invisible creatures within 10 feet of you. And with 14 levels in Rogue and six levels in Monk, that finishes out our overall build for Solid Snake. You'll be able to handle yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but definitely be able to rely on your stealthy ranged attacks even better. And if you wanted to use your tranquilizer to start, you have that spell available to you with sleep. But in the meantime, you can hide out in any nearby boxes, and between your death strike, your Kensai shot, your sneak attack damage, and the critical you would get from ambushing an enemy, you'll be dealing out plenty of damage pretty much the whole way through this build. It's fairly straightforward, but I did want to mix in a few things. If there's anything different that you do in this build, or if you just hate this build overall and just want to let me have it, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I try and read as many of them as possible. And if you want to talk even more about plenty of my builds or any random D&D stuff, we also have a Discord available in the links down in the description. And I asked early in this video, what's your favorite ridiculous 80s action movie? So let me know in the comments as well, because personally, my favorite is Big Trouble in Little China. It's got a classic mullet wearing Kurt Russell, plenty of kung fu and ridiculous one-liners, and it even includes sorcery and even some characters that are 
basically ripped straight out of D&D. This thing, which is basically a much more terrifying version of a bugbear, and this floating monstrosity, which is pretty damn close to a beholder. And if you want access to the character sheets for this build or any of my other builds, or plenty of other perks that I have available, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description down below, where you can be just as incredibly awesome as these people. I cannot thank them enough, they help me do this stuff. And finally, if you made it to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here helping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be a scruffy spy that relies heavily on stealth, but really knows how to hide in a box when he needs to.